Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Oscar. I'm going to talk to you, to you today about MoPro. So the takeaways of TLDR of this talk is three things. So we want to make proofs of mobile. Uh, MoPro is a toolkit for uh, seek application development on mobile and other platforms. And let's make Xenos proofs of mobile great together. So first, we want to make proofs of mobile. Why do we want client-side proving? Uh, well, let's put the zero knowledge back into CK. Uh, I think a lot of focus the last few years has been in terms of the succinctness properties you get from, from CK Tech. Uh, and that's great, but it's not enough for a lot of applications where you sort of require some kind of privacy or interoperability properties. So let's look at a few examples. So this is from uh, Susalu, uh, Supass. So Susalu was this, is this kind of proto-network state. First one happened uh, last year in Montenegro. And they had this kind of digital identity system, CK Ident 3 called Supass. And that allowed you sort of to prove that you belonged, you had access to certain things, and you can do voting and all these kind of things with a CK identity solution. Uh, they later on uh, built on this, so end of last year, they had this kind of funny game at, uh, in Istanbul, at DevConnect, for some of you might have been there, uh, where basically you were like, catching frogs, and these were like easy DSA signatures. And that was like a way of gamifying and getting a lot, lot more people to play around with this. And if you get this event, we also see things like Jubmoji, and basically people playing around with this kind of seek identity things and seeing where we can take this technology. Uh, obviously, for this kind of CK identity stuff, it has to work on mobile. You're not going to carry on your laptop. Uh, and you also need it to work on basically all devices, like 95% of devices. Because otherwise, you can't use it to gate events or uh, do voting on these types of things. Sort of more from the real world, we have uh, something like Aadhaar. So Aadhaar is this uh, real world identity system that's used in India. has more than 800 million users. And basically, you use this for everything. Uh, it's very convenient uh, if you sort of need to sort of prove something to your landlord or get a bank account or apply for a job, you basically sign, send this PDF, signed PDF with all your secrets and stuff, and that's what people use and has a huge adoption. Uh, there's a product, a PC-sponsored product called Anahadar that's basically adding CQ on top of this. So you can sort of, and it's doing that permissionlessly, right? Because it's basically a PDF with an RSA signature. So with that, you can do things like selective disclosure and potentially proof of humanity and these types of applications. And also other examples in the same category, like for example, proof of passport, which is a similar thing in Europe. Uh, and I think this is part of like a larger trend that we've been seeing in the CK space for the last few years, where there's more and more of these like digital uh, signatures and whatnot that we can sort of take and add CK on top of. So if it's RSA signatures or emails or GitHub keys or these things in Ethereum or what have you. Uh, obviously, this is... Um, a lot more complex in terms of uh, circuits and constraints compared to something like Supass. That's uh, much more simple. Uh, but other than CK identity, there's, there's a lot of other examples, right? So going back to the origins of this space with Bitcoin and, and, and so on and Zcash, like actually getting fungible money, right, where your, 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 in, your income or salary is not tied to if you're buying a cup of coffee or whatever. That's still something that a lot of people are working with and on and struggling with today, including a lot of products that in this space. Um, and also private finances more generally uh, in various domains. Uh, there's also more novel things like private social networks and basically where you can try to hide the social graph and for that you also need some kind of client-side proving. Uh, as well as even more sort of out there ideas like CKML, there's lots of products that are experimenting with maybe using your private photos or something like that and then being able to prove things and interact in novel ways. And what all of these things have in common is that basically the user, they want to generate uh, the proof on their phone, right? to get the privacy or any interoperability properties you need. So what do, what do we want from client-side proving? Uh, first of all, it should be secure, so trust minimized, and sort of the user herself generating the claim. Uh, it should be fast, so you want to have good performance for, for big circuits, I mean big in a relative sense here. Uh, like if you look at ECDSA and RSA, it's like around one million constraints, which is much bigger than something like Semaphore, uh, but obviously smaller than all these L2s and so on. But basically, you want to have like a good UX and performance, not just in terms of proving time, but also in terms of memory considerations uh, and uh, proving key size and these types of things. Uh, Shine finally should be friendly, both sort of to end users, obviously, but also to developers. And it should just sort of work on all, or at least 95% of devices, right, for it to actually be useful for a lot of applications. And when I say clients are proving, I don't just mean browsers. I also mean sort of natively. Uh, and you might think, like, why bother? And I think there's a few reasons why you might want to bother. So one is uh, security. So you get operating system level security, whether that's uh, secure storage or biometric, biometric authentication, just general isolation. 
Uh, and I think this is important, especially for like secrets, like uh, real world identity and so on. Uh, you might not just want to put that in a trusted, like random web view. You also get much better performance, just sort of native performance, whether it's like multi-threading or, or access to GPU and, and these types of things. And while you can get this in browsers to some extent, it's always going to be more limited compared to what you can get natively. And it's also going to be sort of less consistent in terms of across different devices and browsers and so on. Uh, you also get better affordances, so more better integration uh, with the phone, whether that's things like camera or sensors or secure enclave or push notifications or persistence and so on, and just sort of a nat more native and fluent experience. Uh, obviously some trade-offs, right? Like a big one is if you don't need an app, you don't have to make one. Uh, there's potential censorship, especially with something like the uh, Apple, uh, Apple Store. Uh, but I think the biggest one by far is that it's very complex to develop and, and distribute, and this is basically where MoPro comes in. So MoPro is a toolkit for CK application development on mobile. Uh, so it's a set of libraries and utilities with a bunch of goals. So modularity is a big one, so it should be easy to sort of add uh, new proof systems and, and platforms. Uh, developer friendly, so very easy for sort of developers to get started to write CK applications. Has a focus on, on performance, so both sort of fast proving, but also low memory usage and these type of things. Uh, Multi-platform, so you can write your CK application once, and then it works on, on multiple platforms, if it's Android S or React Native or what, whatnot. Uh, and you can think of it a bit like Foundry for Seek application development. So the main interface now that we have is basically this command line interface, uh, and this is the main way you interact with it. And this allows you to get started in under five minutes, where you sort of initialize the product, you choose sort of the platforms and the proof system you want to use, and you sort of prepare the circuits, and then you can build for a specific platform, and you can also do testing and exporting bindings and all kinds of stuff. And just briefly, this is roughly what it looks like. So you have a sort of core with your circuits, uh, some Rust wrapper, and then iOS and Android specific stuff, um, as well as a config. And the config just allows you to have a bit of control in terms of the architecture that you are targeting, or so if you want some debug information, as well as what circuit you're using and trust setup and so on. And then this is basically this example application. This is Xcode. This is what people use for developing uh, iPhone applications. And it basically generates this example application that allows you to do basic proving and verifying. And then you can go crazy with your actual app design. So how does it look like? Um, we can think of it as a kind of a flow between multiple layers, where you start with the user and then working towards the app, tooling, and then sort of towards uh, proving systems and so on. And, and you don't have to understand this in detail, but the key idea is kind of separation of concerns, like modularity, right? So I, I don't know if you can see, but jokingly say that the users, they have no brain, they just want something to work. And a circuit developer, they just want to work on the, on the circuit and focus on that. And the same thing for an application developer. And there's lots of things going on here. There's like circum circuits and uh, Mopro Core, circum combat, arc works, Mopro modules, Unify, and so on. And what, basically what I'll do is I'll we'll take a slice of uh, one thing at each layer and also see how these things fit together. So we started with Circom. Uh, why Circom? Well, it's basically the most widely used DSL for client-side proving, and empirically, that's where a lot of the more interesting client-side sort of Seek applications are, are written in right, right now. And you basically just use the circuit the same way, uh, and then you can sort of use MoPro to prepare it a bit, like you do some compilation steps and generate some artifacts, like an optimized proving key and stuff like that, and you can just bring your own circuit setup. Then you have this MoPro core, which is like a core, the core Rust library with multiple adapters. Uh, we're starting off with Circom, but it's very easy to sort of add other proof systems, and we have done some POCs around that. And it basically has an API for initializing the library, uh, proving and verifying, dealing with serialization, and these types of things. And in the case of Circom, it's using Circom Compat, which is part of the Arcworks uh, family, to sort of load the circuit. And the width generation is either done natively, uh, kind of experimental and still a bit work in progress, it only works for some circuits, or via Wasmer. And then proving itself is done natively via Arc uh, Graph 16. Then basically we have this MoPrefy library, and if I just like foreign function interface, so that's how you talk across language barriers. Uh, so that's what allows you to bridge between Rust and Swift and Kotlin and so on. And it's wrapping this Rust API and dealing with what's called like lowering and lifting. So if you have a big num in Rust, it's not the same in Swift, so you need to take care of that. Uh, and it's using Unify to generate bindings for these different languages. Uh, we have support for iOS, Android, as well as uh, React Native. The React Native support is uh, separate via bridge from Yanis at PSC. It's a bit experimental, but it works. We also actually have web support, but that's completely separate from the other stack, and it's not native, obviously, but just for completeness. So you can write your Seek application and then have it working on multiple platforms. And 
Unify, so basically it's Firefox had this problem, like how do we develop complex cross-platform applications? And uh, this is the answer they came up with. And if you're familiar with C bind gen, it's basically a more modern version of that. And the key insight here is that you, sort of, you can keep your business logic in Rust, for example, and then you have these uh, bindings to different uh, language runtimes. So you have the same sort of core code base, and then you just do up sort of platform-specific things where you need to. So you have native bindings uh, in Swift and Kotlin and so on. And then you have the application. So this is Ananadar, uh, and this is sort of showcase app we've been working together with them on. Um, and then at the very end, you have the user, right? And the user, they just want things to work. They don't have any brain. They just want something to work quickly, and that means things like fast proofs and just robust experience and few actions. And I think it would be really cool if we, as, as a space, can sort of create this experience that hide all this CK Voodoo stuff and integrate seamlessly into app uh, and users' daily life and provide even better experiences than what we get with current technology. So just going back out, zooming back out, uh, the whole idea is to make sort of to make make the life of you as an application developer easier. Uh, and as a developer, you can only focus on so much at a given time. Like this UX snap development and Swift libraries and architecture linking Rust, CK circuits, proving systems. There's a lot of things, right? And this requires a lot of people, or at the very least, it takes a lot of hats. And and doing this takes away from focusing on like the business problem. And with MoPro, basically, what we're doing is we're splitting, we're splitting this up and allowing developers to focus on their area of expertise. And the details here are not super important, but that's kind of the general idea and, and intention. And then developer experience is just this, right? So you have this command line interface. You write your circuits. Uh, you get some Unify bindings. And you can also test this in isolation in Swift, Kotlin, and so on. And uh, I know if any of you have sort of used uh, Xcode, but it can be quite painful. But from an, if you're an application developer, there's like sort of no Rust or CKey specific things in, involved. It's just like another app with, with sort of Swift bindings or what have you because we're embedding the Rust library and sort of hiding that complexity. Uh, I mentioned modularity is a big design goals, and I think that applies in a few ways. So one is in terms of platforms. So adding support for something like Python is trivial. So if you want to have like a desktop app or whatever. Um, proof systems, so adding proof systems is, is very easy. We have done some PCs, uh, like in Hackathon, in a few hours we could do like a basic um, PC for Kimchi, which is this Plonkist proof system. Uh, and it doesn't take that much time. Basically, you're wrapping the Rust API and exposing the bindings. Obviously, this depends on the, specific, the particulars of the proof system and how easy it is to embed. Um, and when it comes to tooling, like a lot of concerns you have are very similar. It's like FFI or civilization or linking and packaging and so on. And by having this kind of Rust core, it's kind of a shelling point for this CK ecosystem. It's like fast, secure, flexible, has a lot of developer mind share and so on. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to sort of integrate things. And finally, it's also public good. So Mopro is not tied to any specific business or, or product. And that means that basically whatever is useful to people, people actually writing interesting Seek applications, that's what we want to support. So it's agnostic in that regard. And uh, thanks PC and Search Park for the grant. So where are we now? So we're working with Ananadar uh, on their version one sort of showcase application. And what happened is at the end of last year, we did this uh, POC together with them. Um, and at the time, the number of constraints in Circle was around 160,000, and then it's ballooned up to 1.6 million. It's down a little bit now, but it's still like basically an order of magnitude. Uh, we've also been working with uh, Proof of Passport that have some similar concerns in terms of CK identity. Um, also, the reason that the number of constraints uh, exploded was because they actually added support for like proper nullifiers and selective dis disclosures and so on. So you can sort of prove that you have a valid Aadhaar uh, and you are from a certain province, which are interesting for certain applications. So as part of this, because the number of constraints exploded, uh, we were like, oh, is this actually going to work performance-wise? Uh, what can we actually do on a mobile phone? And that led us into sort of exploring that and trying to understand the limits of client-side proving and sort of working on things like native witness duration and lo loading of arc set key, uh, making it faster. So that's kind of the proving key that we use, uh, arc works based. Uh, we've also been working sort of on improving developer experience, so the command line interface I showed you earlier to just get it, make it very easy for you to get started very quickly, as well as API and the React Native support and so on. Just briefly, this diagram. So, turns out that like the main bottleneck when it comes to running things on or making proofs on mobile is like memory, and that's kind of well understood, I guess, a priori. But it's nice to have empirical confirmation of this. So basically, this graph shows you memory usage, and then this is number of constraints. At the very end, that's like 1.6 million constraints. Um, so what this means basically is that if you have a modern phone with more than four, four gigabytes of memory, you can do things like Anadhar or Proof of Passport, because they're all on the order of magnitude of like one million-ish constraints. And you need like a little bit of a buffer for sort of system 
uh, usage and other applications, because otherwise your phone might sort of uh, kill, your, kill your process and so on. Uh, there's also other performance considerations, but memory uses is by far the biggest one, because if you don't have enough memory, uh, it doesn't work, it just crashes, right? Uh, but through time and witness narration, it might take a bit longer, but it's still tractable. Uh, there's also other concerns like prove a key and so on that you can talk to me more, more about if you're interested. Um, yeah, so finally, let's make CK or mobile great together. So uh, I'm based in Taiwan. In Taiwan, there's an organization called uh, GovZero, and they have this motto. It's like, ask not why nobody's doing this. You are the nobody. I think it's a pretty good motto for like, open source development in general. So you can contribute. Uh, so we'd love to see people uh, try it out and provide feedback, write seek applications. It's, it's fairly easy now with the new command line interface. Uh, we had recently, there was like a hackathon at Oxford with some CKML product called Confidenti. They, they were using MoPro, we didn't know about it, and it worked for them, so I guess that means something for developer experience. Uh, it's also like a community product, um, so we'd love to sort of see more support for more platforms and more proof systems and just general performance improvements as well as docs and so on. And there's a lot of grants available in space, so if this is something you're interested in, there's definitely opportunities to contribute. Uh, more specifically, so we have like experimental React Native support, but that can be integrated uh, better. Uh, we're we'll also entering to sort of make the offering more complete, to sort of have support for uh, PWAs and stuff like that, even though that would not be native, that's still an interesting stepping stone for some products. Uh, more proof systems, so we've been talking uh, with uh, people doing sort of Halo 2 stuff and Noir, which are very interesting from client side proving point of view, but also, also other novel proof systems like Nova or Vol or Binus, have you heard about this morning, that, that would definitely be interesting from a client side proving point of view. As well as performance things, so there's native witness generation. Uh, it works for some circuits, but not for all of them, so we would love to sort of make that more complete. Uh, GPU acceleration, that's another thing. Uh, these phones that we carry around with us, they are quite powerful with the GPU, so it'd be great to be able to unlock that. Uh, it's actually a grant that's ongoing that's looking into that, but there's definitely more work that needs to be done. Uh, as well as loading the set key and, and a lot of other performance things that need to be done. Uh, some contributors, so these are people who have been sort of using MoPro or things that we rely on or people who haven't actually been contributing to MoPro, so Six Park, PSC, uh, for the grant and so on. Vivian, who's been helping out a lot in terms of uh, building out MoPro. Yanis and Florent, who are working on um, CK identity systems, so both uh, Anadar and Proof of Passport respectively, so we have had some good feedback with them. Moven and Foodchain, uh, who have been sort of looking into GPU acceleration. Phil Aramco from Worldcoin, who have done a lot of, in terms of circum witness, uh, native uh, witness narration. Ariman and Vak, who've been doing also do, doing similar things, and hopefully you, if this is something that you're interested in. So, uh, recap, we want to make Prusa Mobile. Mero Pro is a toolkit for Seek application development on mobile. Let's make Sierra Knowledge Prusa Mobile great together. Future is AK, the future is mobile, the future is now. Uh, thank you, any questions? Uh, here are some links to repo and socials. Yeah, uh, so do you use any mm, multi-threading on GPU acceleration for these proofs? Uh, do you provide any API for that? Because I'm wondering when I want to integrate my proof system into this mobile suit, then I would, I would be able to, I would, I, I, would, I would have to be able to provide some mappings from Rust to Swift or to Java on Android in order to run something in multi-threading or GPU. Yes, so, so the, the basically with, you have your Rust code and then you, you use this, you write this sort of interface thing in Unify and then it automatically generates these bindings. And when it comes to multi-threading, there's nothing specific for it, but basically you can do things separately in the background. It's just like another Rust library, right? So it's not, it's, it's, it's not, nothing specific fancy in terms of making it, taking advantage of your phone's both frame per se, but it's sort of running in the background in a separate thread, uh, just like any other separate process. And, and it's and, yeah. And and you are able to do it on phones normally, yeah. Because yeah? I think you probably know that on, for example, on web on browsers, yeah, yeah. So it's it's quite limited. You yeah. Know, so, so native is obviously more flexible, right? Because it's not quite as flexible as like a laptop where you can have sub processes and stuff like that, which is like another limitation. Uh, but I mean, you can run it in in the background basically. Uh, and as for the GPU, uh, so something people have started looking into, but it, it's a bit more work in order to sort of leverage. The goal would be to get sort of MSM acceleration and leverage some of the C price kind of findings, but 
adapting that to mobile, it's just like a bit more involved and will take a bit more time. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any, anyone else? You mentioned memory, you didn't mention proving times. Proving time, yeah, so uh, memory is the biggest one. Uh, proving time, it, it depends a bit on sort of browser and so on, but like when we did compared CatSec with um, Circuit, it's about 10 times faster. Uh, and then with another, like it depends a little bit on the, the how, how complicated the witness duration is. Um, for another, when it was like 1.6 million uh, constraints, the wasm based witness duration is like 10 seconds. If it's native, it's like 0 0.3 or something like that. And then 20 seconds raw prove time. Uh, other bottlenecks is also like it, it's a bit slow to sort of load the proving key. That's uh, something we're working on, as well as the size. Uh, so in Circom, you have this set key proving key. Uh, we, when we convert it to ArcWorks, we use like point compression and stuff like that, so it's 50% 50, 50 smaller. Um, but yeah, but the biggest bottleneck is still like memory uh, and uh, loading the set key uh, and there was some witness information. Proving time is not that much of a concern right now. Obviously, if you have like 10 million or whatever uh, constraints, then it becomes more of a concern. Uh, but yeah, to bring that down, I think requires a bit more work. I think it's probably more fruitful than to look at different proving systems like Halo 2 or something else uh, in, if you want to get like a second proving time or so on. And you mentioned these uh, quite specific circuits. Yep. Have you looked at VMs, anything? VMs? Yeah, a VM circuit. No, not specifically. And I think that you probably wouldn't do like a VM from a phone. You would probably do like a subset, something similar order of magnitude, like one million. I think the largest client side related things, like there is um, CK email, CK P2P. I think there's like 8 million uh, constraints or something like that. And that's like, but, but you wouldn't do like a whole VM thing, right? Like you would just do a subset. And I think that's how Aztec is thinking about it as well. We do the private thing on your phone and then you send it off somewhere to sort of do more complex things. But I think that's still sort of an open area to explore more. Yeah. For the WASM, are you using 32 or 64 bit WASM? Uh, I think for, uh, f if I remember correctly, for us, I think it's 64, but I think WASM, for some older Android phones, I think it might be 32. But we want to get rid of it completely, to be honest. It's yes, just yes, like yes, a because hack. WASM has that limitation yeah. that it, you can't use more than four gigabytes of memory. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we don't want to use that. Ideally, it's just like a kind of a stepping stone uh, where we want to replace it with the sort of Rust-based Circum. Like, Circum is a bit special as well. Uh, just because of how the history and so on, but uh, yeah, we don't want to use it at all. It's just like a stepping stone, basically. Uh, as far as a member, you can also com run uh, this on the Mac. Um, so, are there the memory limitations uh, higher? And like, what's do you think the biggest circuit? Like, have you benchmarked this on the Mac uh, M1 or M2? Uh, not specifically. We briefly compared it to like Snark.js and it's more memory efficient. So like for example, people who have had problems around on ad or on the desktop with Snark.js stack, they've been able to do it with this. I think it's like half the size, something like that. Uh, like I think you have the same problems, obviously, but it's, it's more stricter because usually phones are, are more limited. Uh, but other than that, it's basically the same. Uh, I don't think there's anything specific that makes memory use, mem yeah, it's basically the same on, on a phone as, as a laptop, with the difference that laptops are more powerful, basically. Okay, oh. Hey, um, uh, I'm curious what your opinions are on some of the, recently there's been some interest in these kind of MPC protocols that allow you to offload the brunt of the work of client-side proving. I'm curious what your opinions on those are. Yeah, I mean, in general, I think it's very interesting. Obviously, complexity is, is a big thing, but I think as the solutions of MPC are maturing, I think it's definitely relevant. Also, another interesting thing with MPC is, as my understanding, is like maybe more latency bound or whatever, like the performance curves are different, and that means that it makes a lot of sense for something on mobile. So I, I do think that's interesting. It's just like a bit early, but I would love to play around. If someone is interested in that, I think that would also be very cool to 
make it better on, on phones. But it's figures fairly early, yeah. Yeah, I believe right now also it puts your privacy under like one honest actor assumptions yeah, where your so actors are external right, non-trusted right. parties, but I think it could be tweaked such that you are one of those actors, so as long as you don't reveal your that share. That is definitely interesting. Yeah. That's, that would be interesting to explore, I agree, yeah. All right, let's thank uh, Oscar again. Uh, thank you.